In this session, I will introduce the GeoQuery package. This is a package for interfacing with MCBI GEO or Gene Expression Omnibus. GEO is a widely used repository of public data, and unlike what the name suggests, it contains other data types than gene expression data. There's also a lot of epigenetic data in there. GEO is a, a, a data set, uh, is, a, is a repository where different data sets are stored and have an accession number. So generally in GEO, you have an, a, a data set from a paper. The data set from a paper can be uh, of different kinds. For example, there can be a sub-data set for RNA sequencing and a sub-data set for chip sequencing. That will give rise to two different data sets inside the same uh, series. Each data set can have a number of samples associated with it. So there's an accession number for the super series for the entire data in the paper, there's an accession number for the sub series. There's, in this case, I have described there's a sub series for the RNA seq data and a sub series for the chip sequence data. And then there's accession numbers for the individual samples. Most people who are interested in downloading data from GEO want all the data associated with a given publication. The starting point of all of this is the GEO identifier. So once you have that, it's pretty straightforward. You load the packets, and you get the data. It takes a little while, and it downloads the data inside a list. The reason why it downloads the data into a list is, as I said before, there might be one data set associated with RNA sequencing and another data set associated with chip sequencing. Uh, and in this case, that would give you two components of the list. In this case here, the e-list has a single uh, 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 element, and um, we can see here that it's a serious matrix with this particular session number. And uh, we can get the data by just getting the first one here, and we can look at it. So, wow, this is really an expression set. Everything looks great. There's uh, 12,000 features. Uh, there are six samples. We can even look at the phenotype data associated with the different samples. Usually, when you look at that in GEO, you get a lot of uh, weird variables that are not very useful. So I'm just going to give you the names of the phenodata. Which contain information such as the contact phone number of the person who uploaded this, the, the data, but also useful information uh, about which samples were actually being run. Now, it's important to understand uh, that NCBI GU operates with both something they call raw data and something they call processed data. Process data is fully normalized data ready for analysis. And in many cases, you may or may not be, or in some cases, you may or may not be interested in actually getting the process data. Personally, I prefer to get the raw data associated with most publications and do my own normalization or my own processing of the data. What we get here in the easy way is the process data in the form of a matrix. Also, not all data arrives in the form of a matrix when you're done processing it. Um, and such data, you can't get easily pro fully processed data. GU kind of assumes that data ends up being into a, coming into a matrix. The way you get the raw data is you get the supplementary files. And the supplementary files can be anything. It depends on what the uploader defined to be the raw data. There are certain conventions in the field. Uh, for, for example, Affymetrics, microarray gene expression data, we tend to think of the raw data as something called cell files, which is a binary format uh, detailing what was uh, imaged in the array. Um, but for other data types, it may be a little bit more unclear what is raw data or what is semi-processed data. For next-generation sequencing, you can think of the FASTQ files as the raw data. You can think of the BAM files, which detail the aligned data or the aligned reads as a form of processed data. 
the way uh, process data, uh, sorry, raw data. Uh, raw data in, in GU terms is called supplementary data. So we have a file called get GU sub files, and we can uh, use the same um, um, uh, accession number. And it goes online and does not find anything. That's because I used the wrong uh, number. Uh, and it downloads a tar archive. A tar archive is a little bit like a zip archive, but uh, more used in the Unix world. Inside that archive, there's the data. You have to go, I tend to go outside of R and, and, un, and untar it and see what's in here. So now we have a little, uh, we have a little uh, file. Uh, we have a little directory where uh, the data has been downloaded into. Uh, we can look at that by looking at the elist2 uh, object here in the row names. We get the file name, and now it's ready for further processing using where you tend to have to use some different functions for reading in the raw data, depending on what the raw data really is. So this shows how easy it is to get uh, some data from NCBIGU. There's a similar package for accessing the short read archive, and there's another package for accessing uh, ArrayExpress from EBI.